this was my first magic book, and it contains the secret to the very first card trick that I ever learned. In fact, this book was probably what started me on my plunge into the world of learning and performing magic. However, don't worry, the trick that I'm going to teach you today is an easy one that will leave your audiences gasping. But before I teach you the secret to this jaw-dropping miracle, here's the performance. This trick can be performed with any shuffled deck, and if I had a spectator here, I'd even ask them to shuffle the cards as much as they like. But because I don't, I'll just do all the shuffling myself. Now, let's imagine that we have a random card selected, okay? The most important thing is that you remember this card. So, remember that card, all right? Lock it into your brain, all right? And once you have, I'd ask them to, the spectator to leave the card roughly about the middle of the deck. They can place it in wherever they want. And at this point, they would square that card into the deck, so there's absolutely no way I could control it. In fact, while we're doing this, why don't we even put it inside the box so there's absolutely no way that I could manipulate those cards at all. Now, would you be impressed if I could find your card from within those cards in the box? Okay, but imagine if I could find your card from within the cards and while it's still inside the box. And at this point I'd ask the spectators to hold out their hand and cover it with the other hand like this. And just to symbolize this, because I don't have anyone here, I'm going to put it inside this envelope to make sure that it's out of my control. Now, would you be impressed if not only could I find your card from within the deck, which is inside the box, which is inside the envelope, or in your hands, imagine if I could take that card out, reverse it, and place it back in without you even realizing. Would that be impressive? Imagine if I could do that. If I could, it would probably look something like this. You can see that every single card in the deck is face down. Every single card except for one card, your card, the four of hearts. At this point, the deck is completely examinable, and that's the trick. Now, onto the tutorial. So that's the trick. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, it is worth noting that this trick is a lot better in real life than in front of the camera. And one other thing is that, although this trick is, the basic version of this trick at least, is taught in this book, um, I added some things onto it myself um, just to make it a little bit more impossible. So let's get into how it works. The main secret for this trick is actually right at the start. There's a little bit of preparation, okay? The only thing you need to do is turn the top card, or the bottom card, face up in the deck. So all the cards are face down and the bottom card is face up. Now you can start like this and just have the deck set up so that there's one card face up on the bottom, but I actually like to start with the cards being shuffled by the spectator, so you obviously have to have them all in the normal order before they're shuffled. However, at this point, you've got to actually reverse this bottom card without them realizing it. So I use a simple technique called the Browy Reversal. It looks like this, all right? And just the, the matter of a simple cut, like so, that card uh, is turned face up on the deck. Okay, this is quite an easy um, way to reverse it. And uh, I'll teach you it now. In fact, it's really simple. All you have to do is get a break of below that top card. So all you have to do for that is just lift up like so, Okay, you can insert your pinky into that break, it's called a pinky break, so you're holding a little bit of air between these cards. And now you're going to transfer that to a thumb break, so you're holding the break with your thumb, and you're going to cut off about half the cards from below. You're going to kind of revolve them around the deck like so, making sure that they turn face down. And so now your break includes that previous top card and all of the cards above it. Now you're going to grab everything from below the break to that same motion of revolving the, the cards around the deck and now you're in that position with the card face up on the bottom. If you're a more advanced magician you could do what's called a one card cover pass which looks like this um, and there's the card face down. That's what I would usually use but I'm not going to teach that because it's just a little bit more difficult. Now once you're in this position with the card face up on the bottom of the deck you're ready to go. At this point they can select whichever card you want, they want at least, um, but make sure that you don't expose this bottom card while you're spreading. So, I like to just spread the top two thirds of the deck and kind of leave it open if they can choose whichever card they want. Once they've chosen a card, all you have to do is turn the deck face down without them realizing. Now, the best way to do this is actually completely openly. They're gonna take the card, they're gonna look at it and they're gonna show their friends if they've got friends. Uh, <laughs> I hope they have friends. Um, and in their hand, in your hand, all you're gonna do is just really quickly turn over that deck without them realizing. Now they're not going to be looking at your hands at this point, so it doesn't matter what you do, just make sure that it's really casual, just to, kind of turning it over like this without even thinking about it while still talking and maintaining eye contact with you. 
So that's all it looks like like that. Alternatively, um, like I did in front of this camera, you can do this kind of, you can kind of drop your hand to the side and just hold the deck like this or put it on the table like this. Uh, you leave a little bit of time misdirection and then you just take your hand away and it looks like the deck is, you know, nothing's changed about it. And keep in mind at this point, you're not going to be suspecting anything like this. They're not going to be expecting any moves really while you're, while they're looking at the cards. So all you have to do is turn that deck around like so. So at this point, you're in this position with the card, top card face down, covering all of these other face up cards in the deck. And when they return your card, their card, you want to make sure that they, you don't expose any of these face up cards. So what you're going to do is, what I like to do at least, is clamp down with your thumb like this, by holding, holding the rest of the deck underneath with your fingers. Um, and so that means that they can't accidentally lift these cards without you, without you realizing. So they're just going to place the, their card inside the pack, roughly about the middle. Um, if they place it too far to the top or the bottom, um, it's not ideal, so you want them to place it roughly about the middle. Um, and once they've done that, they can square up the deck to make sure that there's no way you can control their card. Now once their card is face down in the deck, you're left in this situation with all the cards face up except for their card and the one on top. Now all that's left to do in the trick is turn the deck face down without them realising. However, there is a little bit more subtlety to this than you might expect. You could just take the deck behind your back or underneath the table and turn the deck face face down like that and then bring it back up and say you've found their card like behind your back or underneath the table. In fact that's what it teaches in the book. But I thought I could make this just that little bit more impossible while also solving this issue of having to turn the deck over. So what I like to do is place the deck back inside the box. Be careful not to flash this face up card, face down card on the bottom. Alright, I place it back inside the box but I place, place it in the box so that the flap or this, this part of the, the box um, is on the same side as this cover card on top of the deck. Okay? So I place it in like this and uh, do this you know, quickly and as if you're just doing a normal action because that's what you are doing. And now you're going to turn the deck so it's face down like so and you're going to start explaining the conditions. Okay, I'll talk more about the pattern at the end um, but you're going to introduce a little bit of time misdirection. You're going to say, you know, would you be impressed if this happened or if this happened? And while you're doing this you're just letting them forget which orientation the deck is inside the box. In fact, you take it to another another level by asking them to hold out their hand, putting the box inside their hand and holding it like that. At this point, they're not really thinking about what orientation the deck is in. They're just thinking about, you know, how impossible it would be if you could actually do what you're saying. So once it's in their hands, you do a magic gesture, or I like to also ask them what the card is before you, you know, magically find it. Um, and that kind of creates the illusion that you know, you didn't know what the card is beforehand, so you couldn't have set anything up in the deck beforehand. So you ask them the card, you do your little magic gesture or whatever, and now you're going to ask them to hand the deck back to you. And this is the important part. You're just going to take the deck and open it from the other direction, okay? So we put it in this way, and now we're just going to open it this way. So the deck has been completely flipped. And at this point, you're basically home clean. You've just got to do a little bit of cleanup at the end, and you're done. So you're going to spread through the deck, um, or you could spread it on the table, just being careful not to spread that bottom card. So you can spread it on the table and say, look, here is uh, the fully face down deck except for one card, your card, the Eight of Diamonds. All right, that's the trick. They're impressed, they love it. You can hand out the box for inspection, they might think there's something fishy there. If you actually use an envelope, which is actually a good idea if you happen to have one with you, um, hand this out for, for inspection, there's nothing obviously wrong with the envelope. But at this point you've got a card, that same cover card on the bottom again. So I like to just clean up with a one card cover pass like that, um, sorry one card half pass, but um, if you want you can just kind of take off the bottom, take the card off the bottom of the deck without them realising it and just turn it over. This is the moment um, that they're not really looking at the deck as much and even if they are you can kind of just spread through the deck and just show them it's normal um, and then if you like just turn the card face down when they're not looking. So that is basically the trick, um, I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, now I'm going to go into a few tips that will help you take this from a nice easy beginner level trick to something that will blow people's minds. So the first tip is the importance of conditions, alright? Now there's a magician called Darwin Ortiz and he wrote a book called Strong Magic which is talking about the theory behind magic, kind of um, what, make, ma ma what, makes, bleh, what makes magic tick. Um, and he talks about the importance of conditions. A condition is something that you impose upon the trick that doesn't actually have any effect on the method. So I'll give you an example. In this case I could have just had the card replaced face down in the deck 
all right so i'm in this position i could have just had it replaced and then maybe put it behind my back and found that card uh, by just turning the cards over like so however it wouldn't have been as impressive you have to build it up and add layers of impossibility so i put it inside the box now as soon as the deck is inside the box they know that there's no way i can get inside there without opening the box there's no way i can manipulate the cards and so when i say something like imagine if i could find your card from within inside the box um, it makes it seem a little bit more impossible and now you take it to another level and you put it inside their hands okay so now it would be almost it would be impossible in their minds for you to find that card from within inside the deck which is also inside their hands so you're just adding on layers of impossibility which make this um, instead of a normal trick to something that is mind-blowing. I also like the envelope idea. I kind of came up with this as a way to simulate having someone's hands there. Um, but I think if you had an envelope with you in performance, I think it would be quite strong if you, to, if you were to put the deck inside the envelope and seal it up just to make sure that there's no way you could get inside of it. Now it's also important that um, these conditions are dramatized. If you just do them and don't explain them, the audience might not catch on to the fact that it's making it more impossible. So here's an analogy of why dramatizing conditions really helps. Have you seen those infomercials where they have sets of cutlery or steak knife sets that they're trying to sell and they'll chuck in like 65 free things and it's all for the low price of $35.99 and first 10 customers get this or that. They're actually demonstrating a perfect example of dramatizing the conditions. If they just gave you the whole offer up front and just said it like it was, you'd probably think, oh yeah, that's a pretty good deal. But they start off by saying, look, here's a steak knife. Imagine how much you'd pay for this. Oh, we'll add in another one. In fact, we'll add in six more and also this other knife that you didn't know you wanted. And then they add in a whole bunch of extra free things and this on top and uh, all these limited offers. And so by the time, by the end of the infomercial, you're thinking, man, this is the best deal ever. I have to get this straight away. It's the same thing with this magic trick, although <laughs> it's a little bit different. If you just said, you know, imagine if I could find your card from within the deck, which is inside the envelope, it would be, it would be impressive. But you start by lowering the expectations by saying, I'm just going to find your card to saying i'm going to find it from within the box saying well i'm going to find it within the box which is inside your hands and i'm not only that i'm going to reverse it inside the deck that takes it from the level of a oh yeah that's a cool card trick to wow that is actually impossible so sorry for my reroute um that's just a little bit of magic theory for you to just help you in the performance of this and if you're interested in more stuff like this i've got some uh notes on the history of this card trick and the crediting of it down in the description if you want to check that out so there you go. The first card trick that I ever learned along with some extra touches to just take it to the next level. Now I probably won't make too many of these tutorials, but if you really enjoyed it, let me know in the comments and it might change my mind. We might be making tutorials all the time. Um, but that's been me. I really hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.